Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing, Bugavish? Did you enjoy the outside today? Hope you guys can bear with me today. My voice is mostly back, but it's still kind of coming in and out. We'll see what happens. Dang, Jesse said it's 50 degrees today and I feel it just in my down jacket that's open. Getting a little warm, but not to worry. Apparently we have single digit temps in the forecast. So winter's not over yet. So I don't know about you guys, I am one of those people that loves winters. In fact, I think I'm somewhat of a vampire because I used to live in a place that was sunny all the time and it made me grumpy, to be honest. I like weather and I love snow. That's right, sun makes me hiss. <laughs> that said, I'm really excited for the upcoming gardening season. And one of my projects this winter is to make sure we're ready for it. Last year, we took the something is better than nothing approach and we were gonna be happy if we got anything out of our garden. We had to do a lot of work just to make the garden plant ready. We definitely didn't start any seeds indoors. We got most of our plants from a local nursery at their like end of season blowout sale, but it was mid to end of June. So we got a really late start to our garden and we're in a Northern climate. So it's even more important to not do that this year. This year we're starting in a much better place because we already have our raised beds built. They're already filled with soil. And before the snow came, I laid down some aged horse manure, which should kind of jumpstart our soil for the upcoming season. So I guess what I'm getting at is this winter, I've spent a significant amount of time planting our garden. But what I've decided on is we're starting our seeds indoors this year. This is our first year we can do that because our house is dried in, so we have a controlled climate to do it in. But because this year my goal is to have an even better garden than last year, I really have spent some time thinking about what we want to plant. Do we want just run-of-the-mill seeds you can pick up at, say, the grocery store? Or do we want to order something specific online? On the other hand, we have so many seed packets, it seems a shame not to use any of them, right? Let me show you what I'm talking about. First of all, people that order seed catalogs every year from every company under the sun, I get it now. I only ordered one. I've been on this company's website, but I wanted something physical and tangible in my hands that I could look at. So what I love about seed companies is they provide a lot of literature via it in physical form or on their website to help you pick the best variety to grow. To be honest, seeds isn't something we've really worried about in previous gardens because we are such novice gardeners that we had no business worrying about exactly what we were growing. We were just gonna be happy if anything grew, period. But now we're in a point where if we're gonna be starting our seeds indoors and really investing a lot of time in our garden and trying to maximize the space, we do wanna be a little bit more mindful of what we're growing. That said, a lot of these seed companies, their seeds are more costly than what you'll find in a store. These seeds here from Johnny's, I found a lot of them are about 4 30 a packet or so, and locally you're probably gonna get them for about $2.50, $2, maybe $1.50 a packet, you know, which isn't a lot of money, it's not all about the money, but if you're getting a crap ton of seed packets, it can really start to add up. 
These are all the seeds we've accumulated over, say, the past five years or so. But you can see there's so many seeds here. We have many types of carrots, purple beauty bell peppers, some normal bell peppers, red bell peppers. So why do I need to buy bell pepper seeds? That's something that I don't know that I'm super picky about is a variety. Two types of basil, we have green zebra tomatoes, and then we just have a, I'm guessing, just kind of a generic cherry tomato. Two different types of green onion, a lettuce, and then a romaine lettuce, and romaine, both of these are something I wanna plant this year, and again, not super picky about the variety. And same with beets, our beets did really well last year. I think we planted these beets, Tall Top Early Wonder, but according to the seed catalogs, these are supposed to be the best for canning. The problem though, some of these seeds came from our very first garden that Jesse and I had together, which I think was five years ago, something like that. Some of these we've planted with success and some of them never came up. So what we don't know is were conditions not right for germination or were the seeds bad? I don't know. I also got these when I took the Master Gardener's course. I planted these and they didn't come up and then I just was curious if the date was on the packet, which it always is, FYI. They're from 2001, holy crap. I wouldn't be shocked at all if none of these seeds are viable. And the really unfortunate part is had we known that, we would have dedicated that garden space to something else, right? And I'm extra concerned about testing these seeds properly because they've not been stored well. Some of these have spent multiple summers at 100 plus degrees. Some of those, I can already tell you, sprouted last year and had a very good germination rate. But this year, again, not willing to take the risk. I'm really motivated to get all my gardening stuff here. Everything I need to start the seedlings indoors, I want the seeds on site because when it's go time, I wanna go. And it looks like the earliest seeds we're gonna have to start indoors, I think would be, it's either tomatoes or peppers. And you can sow those indoors eight weeks before you wanna put them outside. And for us, people start putting stuff outside in mid-May, which means the first seeds we're gonna start indoors, we're gonna start in mid-March, and that's only about six weeks away. One way to test the viability of your old seed packets is the wet paper towel method. You wanna take a paper towel and then get it wet, probably with like a mister, you know, a spray bottle, and putting 10 seeds on the paper towel in a row or two rows is a good number. And the reason for that, probably no seed packet is gonna have a 100% germination rate. If you look on the back of these seed packets, they recommend to basically over plant because it's guaranteed they're not all gonna come up. There's gonna be some that are probably weaker than others or stronger than others, so that's why it's recommended once they do germinate and they get a little bit stronger to thin them out to the proper spacing and then thin out any weak looking seedlings. So if you put 10 seeds on the paper towel, you can figure out a rough germination rate of maybe the entire seed packet. Yes, it is a rough sample, but it's better than nothing. So I think 50%, that's not great, but it's certainly not bad. Anything less than that, it doesn't mean don't use the seeds, but it might mean you want to overplant even more, right? So here you have it. These are the seeds that I've picked out in our collection that I'm wanting to test for viability. And this exercise should help us decide what we wanna plant and then what we wanna order online to supplement. I forgot one important step. After you wet the paper towel, you wanna fold it over the seeds and then maybe enclose it in another paper towel that's wet to prevent it from drying out. And then you wanna seal it in a Ziploc baggie and put it somewhere warm. The key is that you want to mimic germination conditions for that seed, which for most seeds, it's a warm and wet location, like the soil in spring once it warms up after a rain, and that whole seedling is covered in moist soil. You guys want a sneak peek at my latest food experiment? So I made two different types of sourdough pizza crust from our sourdough starter, and I'm trying what my friend calls a freezer baking, where you pre-bake a bunch of crusts and then freeze them. So basically you have healthy frozen pizza ready to go at a moment's notice. I already have two in the freezer, but in total we should have six pizzas ready to go. I'm letting the dough rise right now. These babies have probably three more hours to go and then we'll go ahead and pre-bake them, put our toppings on and toss them in the freezer.
last but not least. Boom. And that's how you test for seed germination, my friends. I ended up not testing these guys because there's only about 12 seeds. So I'm not willing to take the risk, I guess. It's not about trying to save all the seeds, it's about not being completely wasteful. So if we test 10 seeds and there's only two left, I don't know that it's the best use of time. So these guys we're probably not gonna bother with. However, in its place, I decided to test red orach. What the heck is that? That's what I said during the Master Gardener's course when someone showed up with this to share. I said, I don't know what it is, but I'll take some. And then I went home and I got on the old Google, which I had to do again last night to remind myself what it is. It's known as mountain spinach. Apparently this was common to grow back in the Dizay. I think it's more hardy than spinach. It's less sensitive to its growing climate and it's bright purple. And duh, because it's purple, it must mean it's good for you. That's kind of the last thing I wanted to share is that there's a lot of seeds out there locally, especially if you're in somewhat of a farming gardening community as we are. A lot of towns or cities have a seed bank. That's not something I've looked into yet, but it's on the to-do list. And some of those seeds are very tailored to your climate because they've been around for generations and people are always saving the best of the best in your particular climate. But again, that's a project for another year. Well, there you have it, guys. This excites me. I thought I was gonna use a lot of pint bags. I was thinking one bag per seed, and it turns out I did one bag for four seeds. So in total, we're testing 20 seed packets. But potentially, that's 20 seed packets we don't have to buy, right? Time to put these puppies in a warm place, finish the pizza project, and I'll check in with you guys in 10 to 14 days, somewhere around there. That's a really good sign, guys. Really excited to open this bag. Hmm, which should we open first? No freaking way. Ha, this is fun. The date on this packet is 2016, so these are three years old. Nice. They've been stored in all the wrong conditions. Yep. Guess what the germination rate is? Hundy. 90%. 90? That's pretty good. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's so incredible. I was gonna open all these and then share the results with you guys, but like I had to share this raw, this really raw emotion, how, fun. how much fun this is. And it's not even in dirt. Those seeds don't even know. Let's see what else we got. I have to get my, my perfectly posed square Instagram photo because if there's no photo, then there's no proof that this happened. Thanks for helping me with the marker board. I'm trying to leave the video. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> Also, 
also a three-year-old seed packet stored the same way. more sprouts here than seeds. Is that even possible? Those sprouted. It's like 50. Some are a dud. 50. This is pretty good, like 60. Uh, I think the basil is both 90. Womp, 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 womp. Right. <laughs> Come on, lettuce, you have one job. Huh, these are 50 or less. Are you happy 40. we're doing this? I like data. I'm Isn't a little data nerdy. Fun? I'm like, a little nerdy. So I like to do case studies. I don't, like, I'm just not a gambler. I'm a risk taker, risk taker, but not a gambler. There's right. a difference. Like, I love planting and seeing what comes up, but like, yeah, planting and going out week after week after week, like, come on, let us come right. on. What are you doing? <laughs> like, this is way more predictable, and I think <laughs> predictable equals gardening Good fun. Garden. <laughs> Are you glad we didn't plant these? Wonder why we can't grow peppers. Come on, peppers. This makes me feel better about myself that sometimes I'm not the problem. Right? Turns out we're not bad gardeners. Turns sometimes, out the seeds stink. Sometimes I do get to point the finger at someone else. <laughs> no, okay, I'm not saying we're not bad gardeners. I'm just saying that that makes me feel a better. <laughs> See, these are weak. I don't know if I should count these. I mean, if they're not trying, they're like if the best they have is I tried. I don't know. Like right, you don't get a trophy, get a trophy for here. trying. Yeah, there's no no I'm not, try. I don't want to do. plant these, so we're gonna say like that one looks like it's sprouting. See a little. Well, right, tiny. it's trying. Yeah, it's, tried. It's pretending. <laughs> is there a column on your sheet for tried? Uh, the percentage level will be meh. Got it. Last ones. Two more. Do you want to make a bet? Ooh. I don't know what we're betting on. I don't know. Sure. So we have two <laughs> left. Okay. Purple peppers. My prediction is these aren't going to sprout. I agree based and on the other peppers. my theory is I'm wondering if pepper seeds are more sensitive than other seeds. Could be. Just a theory. You have to start with a theory, right? Mm-hmm. And the second are these Thumbelina carrots from 2001. <laughs> we did the math. We have to do a lot of counting. I was in junior high when these seeds came into existence, okay? I'm going to go with no because none of these have ever sprouted in the past. Look at that packet, guys. 2001. <laughs> they had color printing back then? Apparently. What? I didn't even have a cell phone yet. Cell phones? It wasn't even Facebook when those carrots were made. Take your place among the didn't sprout column. <laughs> so for the really tiny seeds, like the carrots, I did 20 instead of 10. Oh, oh. No way. Wait, oh man. Zero. Goose egg. Zero. Shocker. I was really hoping to make some really good clickbait title about 15 year old seeds <laughs> sprouting. I was thinking. But again, this validates that maybe I'm not a terrible gardener. Maybe yeah. my seeds were just bad. I'm thinking we should get some some seeds from like Jesus time and try the I'm sure they exist. Seeds. I'm sure they exist. If those seeds sprouted, we were immediately going to put those on an auction because totally. we've got the oldest carrot seeds that have sprouted ever. Well, you had to try, right? I mean, if I found a seed packet that was 100 years old, I'd probably try just cuz what if Looks to me like we're eating beets this year. Right? <laughs> yeah, this has been a really interesting exercise. Like, is yeah. this what you thought? Like, what, what did you think was going to happen? You know, I was really curious because I was like, that makes a lot of sense instead of just having this gamble garden, which is no fun. It's so much work. I feel like any leg up 
a new gardener can give themselves in kind of getting established and finding kind of a rhythm seems like a worthwhile investment. What I like about this is you can do it in the winter, in the comfort of your home, with things that are cheap and affordable. And so this whole gardening thing doesn't have to be this massive undertaking. And to me, it's not blurry. It's pretty obvious what's not gonna sprout and what's gonna go absolutely gangbusters. So green zebra tomatoes. 2016. 2016, the year of the Trump. Okay, romaine lettuce. 2016. And lettuce lettuce? I don't even, <laughs> lettuce lettuce? 2014. Ooh, that's getting old. Beets, cylindria. 2015. Ooh, that doesn't explain anything. 2014. Huh, confusing. Golden peppers, 2016 goose egg. What? 2016. Um, what? 2016. For purple? Next one, yep. Okay, and Thumbelina. 2001, when Alyssa was a little girl. What is it? Red Oratch. Oh, Red Oratch. I have no idea how to spell Oratch. Three, zero. Date unknown. <laughs> Date <laughs> question mark. Sometime in the past. <laughs> would it be weird if I framed this for our bathroom? It would make me really happy every time I look at it. It is art. It wouldn't be weird. It's like canning all your food and then not wanting to eat it because you want to look at that's, it because it makes you yep. happy inside. That's what I was starting to think. So just a few questions some of you might have. How long did I let these go for? I think it's been either 13 or 14 days. The beets, the ones that went absolutely cray cray, those I think were sprouting like on day four or five. It was very obvious. For the testing, it's important for your paper towels not to dry out. So did mine dry out? No. They feel as wet uh, as the day I put them in there. So no need to miss them or anything. I just kept them on top of our refrigerator, which is probably the warmest place in the house. We keep our garage to a steady 68 degrees, which I think is on the lower end for testing uh, germination rates and then maybe on top of the fridge it's a little bit warmer because it's getting maybe some residual heat from the heater and then it's an appliance so that was the temperature we were working with. Does this case study influence our seed purchase decisions for the year? I would say it does. In my Johnny's shopping cart I put in everything I think we're gonna plant knowing that we had some seed packets of those same things. And now that I know a lot of these packets are viable, like the beets, and we have a lot of them, I'm probably gonna take the frugal approach and just use what we have. I think that's about it for this video. I can tell you that a lot of new things are intimidating, even something as simple as testing your old seeds. It probably took, I don't know, 30 minutes, a little longer, because I'm filming. They're really low maintenance, it feels really good to know the condition of our seeds and know that we're not being wasteful. This is a really great, probably science experiment for kids. I can't see why they wouldn't just really enjoy this. And above all, I think it's just a really good exercise in the dead of winter before things get crazy and gardening season is upon us. I think most of us are always trying to have our best garden yet and this is just one extra piece of insurance to ensure that could happen. And the one piece of amateur gardening advice I want to give. Even though I've taken the Master Gardener's course, I by no means would consider myself a master gardener. That doesn't come from a classroom. It comes from years, years and years of experience and trial and error. And I can say that as a newer gardener that only has a handful of gardens under my belt, a lot of this information in the beginning was extremely overwhelming. And every year I do something a little bit more to have an even better garden. But the first garden Jesse and I had, I was getting really caught up in a lot of this stuff like soil testing and seed testing. And Jesse encouraged me to, you know what? Let's just go buy seeds. We're gonna stick them in the ground. We're not gonna overthink it. And we're gonna water it. And if anything grows, great. And if nothing grows at all, great. They took his advice and guess what? We probably had 60 to 70% of the stuff we planted actually grow. But when I share this information, first and foremost, what I'm hoping is that people are inspired to just get started. Don't try to be an expert. 
Don't try to be the best. Don't try to do it all right. It's very simple. Put seeds in the ground, water the seeds, and in many instances, you're gonna grow food.